The Gemini North Telescope has taken some of the finest quality photos of Jupiter through a method called lucky imaging. These images were gathered by researchers of the Worldwide Gemini Observatory run by NSF's NOR Lab. The precise Gemini infrared photos work with Hubble's optical and ultraviolet measurements and Juno's radio observations to reveal new details about the enormous planet. Thankfully, the images show the planet's characteristics in great detail. However, they are pretty different from anything anyone has seen in the past. We have gathered all the details about these images, so stay tuned to the end for the information. A composite of the first two images shows the giant planet in the solar system against the dark backdrop of space, with swirls of various hues signifying Jupiter's chaotic atmosphere. It shows that the planet's top and bottom strong orange lights indicate Jupiter's northern and southern auroras, which are situated near its poles, respectively. The images also revealed the great red spots, which, according to NASA, is 1.3 times the diameter of Earth and can generate winds of more than 250 miles per hour. Due to its high altitude and ability to reflect sunlight, the area appears white in the photograph. The second picture provides a broader perspective of Jupiter and its rings, a million times fainter than the planet. These images from space have shown us that the surface of Jupiter resembles a patchwork of vibrant cloud bands and patches. It shows us that the bright hues we see throughout Jupiter may be plumes of gases, including sulfur and phosphorus rising from the planet's heated center. The images reveal that the strong jet streams are produced by Jupiter's rapid rotation, which spins once every 10 hours and divides its clouds into bright and dark zones across vast expanses. The skies of the gas planet consist of three separate cloud layers that measure roughly 44 miles or 71 kilometers together. The center cloud is likely constructed of ammonium hydrosulfide crystals. In contrast, the upper cloud is more likely composed of ammonia ice. Water, ice and vapor might make up the outermost layer. For these images, Jupiter's spots may last a very long time since no solid surface will slow them down. At the equator, some prevailing winds on stormy Jupiter may reach up to 335 miles per hour, that's 539 kilometers per hour. The Great Red Spot has been seen for more than 300 years. However, Gemini saw a distinctive light in the Great Red Spot while searching the gas giant for openings in the cloud cover. The glow indicated a clear view down to deep, warmer atmospheric layers. Similar patterns had previously been seen in the Great Red Spot. Still, their composition remained a mystery due to the inability of visible light observations to discern between denser cloud material and thinner cloud cover over Jupiter's heated core. With the help of the Gemini data, this riddle is now precise. Hubble's visible light photographs of the Great Red Spot show a blue semicircle. At the same time, Gemini's infrared images reveal a dazzling arc illuminating the area. Thicker clouds would have prevented this infrared light from Jupiter's internal heat. Still, Jupiter's airy atmosphere allows it to do so unhindered. Gemini verifies these structures as cloud gaps by identifying them as brilliant infrared hotspots. Over the last three years, the precise multi-wavelength photography of Jupiter by Gemini and Hubble has been essential for placing the findings of the Juno mission in perspective and for comprehending Jupiter's wind patterns, atmospheric waves and cyclones. Similar to a network of weather satellites that meteorologists use to study Earth, the two telescopes, in conjunction with Juno, can examine Jupiter's atmosphere as a system of winds, gases, heat and weather events, thereby offering coverage and understanding. Imke de Peter, an Emirata Professor of Astronomy, Earth and Planetary Science at the University of California, Berkeley, who assisted in leading the observations of Jupiter, said, We hadn't really anticipated it to be this good, to be honest. The fact that we can see the intricacies of Jupiter, its rings, small satellites, and even galaxies in one shot is fantastic. 
According to Michael Wong of UC Berkeley, who headed the study team, the Gemini observations were crucial because they enabled us to dig deeply into Jupiter's clouds regularly. We used a highly powerful method known as fortunate imaging, Wong continues. Only the clearest photographs taken during brief periods of stable Earth's atmosphere are utilized in good imaging, which produces a huge number of concise exposure images. The outcome in this instance is some of the finest infrared ground-based photographs of Jupiter yet taken. These photographs rival the vista from space, claims Wong. Juno discovered radio signals produced by intense lightning flashes known as whistlers and spherics on each of its near passes over Jupiter's clouds. Gemini and Hubble focused on Jupiter whenever possible, creating high-resolution, wide-area maps of the massive planet to supplement Juno's findings. Clusters of Whistler and Spheric signals might be located using Juno sensors by determining their latitude and longitude coordinates. Researchers can now examine the cloud structure at these sites thanks to Gemini and Hubble photos taken at various wavelengths. Combining these three pieces of knowledge, the study team discovered that massive convective cells are created above thick clouds of water, ice and liquid, where lightning strikes and some of the most robust storm systems that produce them occur. Since lightning is a sign of convection, the turbulent mixing process that carries Jupiter's interior heat up to the visible cloud tops. Io, Europa, Ganymede and Callisto, Jupiter's four biggest moons, have all been shown to contain new visible wavelength auroras. The sparse atmospheres of these Jovian moons include traces of oxygen and sodium, but little water vapor, as shown in more detail by the new auroras. The high-end resolution Eschel spectrometer at the Keck Observatory and high-resolution spectrographs at the Large Binocular Telescope and Apache Point Observatory we used to observe the moons as they pass through the shadow of Jupiter. Using Jupiter's shadow as a sunscreen, the researchers could see the weak auroras brought on by Jupiter's powerful magnetic field without being blinded by the intense sunlight reflected from the Galilean moons, so called after Galileo Galilei, who discovered them in the 1600s. In a statement, Catherine de Clear, a professor at the California Institute of Technology and the paper's principal author, stated, These observations are challenging since in Jupiter's shadow, the moons are almost undetectable. The only proof that we've even positioned the telescope in the proper direction is the light produced by their feeble auroras. The oxygen auroras on the four Galilean moons are identical to those observed above Earth near the poles. However, compared to Earth, the gases on the Jovian moons are significantly thinner, therefore they emit a deep red light instead of the more common green glow. The oxygen auroras on the moons Europa and Ganymede, more prominent than Mercury and the giant moon in the solar system, are also visible at infrared wavelengths just beyond the red end of the electromagnetic spectrum and are thus invisible to human sight. This phenomenon has never before been seen in a celestial body's atmosphere other than our planet. Io's aurora is striped with various hues, perhaps because this Jovian moon is thought to be the most volcanically active object in the solar system. This ferocious volcanism causes plumes of gas and dust to be released from the surface of Io, reaching heights of hundreds of kilometers. These plumes are made up of salts like potassium chloride and sodium chloride, which, as they decay, change the hues to the auroras on Io. The spectrum of hues includes a sodium-generated yellow-orange light and a potassium-generated infrared aurora that has never been seen before. Callisto, Ganymede and Europa are the three Galilean moons now thought to have seas of liquid water under their thick ice surfaces. There is also evidence that the atmosphere of Europa, which is believed to have twice as much water as Earth, may contain liquid reservoirs of a subsurface ocean of water. The team's investigations have only found trace amounts of water vapor, which may influence the ongoing scientific discussion 
over whether the atmospheres of the Jovian moons are primarily composed of water molecules. Jupiter's magnetic field is tilted, which means that when the gas giant spins, the brightness of the auroras on the Galilean moons fluctuates. Additionally, when the moons move in the shadow of the enormous planet, their atmospheres change as they lose exposure to warm sunlight. In support of NASA's Juno mission, these photographs are part of a multi-year collaborative observation effort with the Hubble Space Telescope. We hope you enjoyed watching this video. If yes, we're sure you would like this next video here. Thanks for watching.